Welcome to No Apologies, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I'm your host, Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hintz. Hello there. And um, I'm looking forward. We've got a couple of great guests tonight. I think, I think we're going to have a good Southwest show. Southwest <laughs> Patriots. Yeah, this will be fun. And uh, Freedom Fest interview. And off the cuff, there's so much everywhere. I don't know. It's I don't, a bonanza. It is. I like, here. <clears throat> it is a veritable cornucopia of information. Yes. Uh, all right, so the first one, I want to talk about critical race theory in the schools, mm -hmm. okay? Now, we hear a lot about it. We've heard a lot about it from the various states. <clears throat> the question is, what's going on in North Dakota? Right. Now, um, the, the, the first thing that I want to, to discuss, really, is what is critical race theory. Okay. So I went to Encyclopedia Britannica, hmm. believe it or not. Remember? Yes, 600 I pounds do. All of books? Of yes, absolutely. Right. So, folks, here's what, here's what Britannica has to say about it. Critical race theory, it's an intellectual movement and loosely organized framework of legal analysis based on the premise that race is not a natural, biologically grounded feature of physically distinct subgroups of human beings, but a socially constructed, in other words, culturally invented, right. category that is used to oppress and exploit people of color. Critical Seriously? Race they actually... Oh, yeah. Critical yeah, race theorists oh, hold that the law and legal institutions in the United States are inherently racist insofar as they function to create, maintain social, economic, and political inequalities between whites and non-whites. I am shocked that it is so straightforward and correct. It's, it, well, that's exactly, it is what it is. I mean, it's usually spin anywhere we get it, so right. that's crazy. Now, cool. if you okay. go to, um, even in their, their work, which was published in 2001, Critical Race Theory and Introduction, they say that uh, ra they've got various tenets. They say race is a socially constructed, not biologically natural. Racism in the United States is normal, not aberrational. It is the common, ordinary experiences of most people of color. Um, owing to what race theorists call interest convergence, material determinism, they go into this whole thing about a hierarchy of being a victim. So if you, intersectionality you've probably interest heard of. Interest convergence. So, yes. So you've got... So this is what critical race theory is. Right. And I'll break it down for how I view it. Critical race theory is teaching and uh, explaining in the, the, everything in the world around us in, uh, through the lens of race. And that's it. Everything is based on race. That's number one. Number two is people are divided into um, a dichotomy. Either they are an oppressor or they are a victim. That's critical race theory. That's why we don't want it in our schools. Now, people will say, it's nothing more than just making sure that uh, accurate history on slavery is taught. No, that's a lie. That's not what it's about. Just look at Britannica. Wow. All right. So the thing is, critical race theory, what would it look like coming into North Dakota schools? Well, the first thing is there are standards, right? There is a, an organization called Cognia. Mm -hmm. Cognia sets the standards. Cognia also accredits the schools. So the schools must follow the standards if DPI accepts right. the, the, right. And they have a contract with them. And then they are judged on how well they follow the standards right. on whether they get accredited. Now, what's interesting, go ahead and pull up. Let's take a look at, at uh, the standards. Just today, just today, these were released. Now, the standards, uh, this is effect of July of 2022. The standards, the, the working, we'll say the working papers for the standards have been around for quite a long time. Right. I've, I've been aware of them. However, I was not able to talk about them until today because today they became public. Uh, hit the next graphic, if you would, please. So uh, this is in the beginning of their, their performance standards. Uh, it, it's a preface, in essence. It says, every iteration of Cognia's performance standards builds on the prior version to support ongoing improvement. You see, they have each, every two years, they update their standards. And North Dakota has already been with Cognia, who, if you've been following education in North Dakota, they were previously uh, advanced ed or advanced ed. Um, and now they're Cognia. But it goes on to say, many of the themes of the previous standards are reflected in the new standards. The 2022 standards also include several significant new concepts to guide institutions forward, including, now there are about four new general categories, but one of the new categories is demonstration of equity. These standards emphasize the expectation of equity for every learner across all aspects of the institution. Equity is expressed in the institution culture and in a curriculum that values the diversity of individuals, families, cultures, and more. 
There it is. So this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the standards just a little bit. There are 30 standards, and there are a few that I picked out that it really um, are, are based on this new overall topic of equity. Now, if it comes and is presented to North Dakota schools, it's not going to be called critical race theory. Of course not. The standards themselves, you can read into them what you will. On their face, they're not evil. They're just fine. The problem is in the details. How will these standards be incorporated into a curriculum that ensures the accreditation of the schools? Exactly. And that it's how you interpret it and how you're going to um, execute it. Pull up the next graphic. Let's take a look. I think I've got six total standards. Standard one. You tell me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you think that this could be a Trojan horse to open the door for critical race theory by whatever name it might have. Leaders cultivate and sustain a culture that demonstrates respect, fairness, equity, and inclusion, and is free from bias. You know, my question is according to who? Right. Standard 12. Learners experience curriculum and instruction that emphasize the value of diverse cultures, backgrounds, and abilities. I'm getting Again, a theme here, like several different. And how do you do that when you're teaching English? Right. Well, and, and here's the thing. Based on how it's phrased, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Right. If let's understand what the values are of very, you know, if we're going to study anthropology, what are the values of any particular culture? I don't have a problem with that. What I, what I don't want is CRT, critical race theory, coming in by way of this, which is just phrased nicely. It's euphemistically phrased, so nobody in their right mind could object, and yet, lo and behold, we end up with critical race theory. Pull up the next graphic, if you would. A couple more of the standards, number 13. Learners have equitable opportunities to realize their learning potential. Now, as we've discussed on the show, that could mean just about anything. If you have been following along when Lori and I go through executive the orders. proclamations and executive orders, right. this is code word for basically institute government coercion to, to think how they want you to think, to talk how they want you to talk. Every single time you see the word equitable, your red flag should go up. It should. Standard number 19, learners' diverse academic and non-academic needs are identified and effectively addressed through appropriate interventions. Now, I'd like to know what the non-academic needs are. Now, exactly. again, maybe non-academic is, you know, learn how to balance a checkbook. I don't know, but it, it raises a red flag for me. The last one, let's pull up the last graphic, the final two um, standards that I have a concern with. And by the way, there are several of the other standards that I have um, a limited concern for, but how it's phrased uh, could help usher in uh, this CRT. Standard number 25, professional staff members implement curriculum and instruction that are aligned for relevancy, inclusion, and effectiveness. So this is, this is the, one of the key ones, right? Yep, yep. You relevancy have to implement and inclusion. a curriculum yep. that are aligned for relevancy. Relevancy and inclusion. Standard number 30, the last one, learners need, learners needs drive the equitable allocation and management of human, material, digital, and fiscal resources. Ooh. So right there, it tells me that if we are going to assume that perhaps the left, the leftists, are driving this agenda, that we are going to see an inequitable allocation according to skin color, which is just ridiculous. So... Now, here's the thing. What's going to happen? I was in contact with uh, DPI today, uh, Department of Public Instruction, and um, they're, I think they're going, I'm hoping, they're going to be helpful. Uh, they've shared information. I haven't had a chance to, to open it, but I have the new contract. The old contract of the state with Cognia was for just over $1.1 million, and there was a separate contract for uh, um, professional um, education for another $400,000. They're moving now to where the school districts are individually going to pay rather than the state pay. Um, but I'm hoping that DPI will continue to work with me to get to the bottom of this. They are aware that what we're looking at is not accusing people, but we want to make sure we don't have a door open uh, for a soft, passive pathway for exactly. critical race theory, which is overtly evil, to enter our education system. 
way to bring that to the light. So keep following along. And by the way, if you haven't yet, call your darn school board members and tell them you will not tolerate mask mandates on the kids, please. Amen. All right. Got a special guest, folks. Uh, hang with us. We'll be back in just two minutes. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. At Beck Communications, we've been planning for your future. Over the past decade, we've placed nearly 200,000 miles of dedicated fiber optics in the ground. Enough fiber optic strands to circle the world eight times. Taking no shortcuts, we connected every home and business in our service area with dedicated fiber optics. It's your personal, unrestricted, unthrottled connection to the world. Best of all, this dedicated fiber means you do not share your connection. We call this intimate dedicated connection Beck Fiber. We're back. It's no apologies on Beck. I've got a couple of special guests with me. It's Jeff Fitzik and Rizal Unruh. Uh, I would say founders of the Southwest Patriots Group. Is that accurate? That would be Jeff. Jeff is. I am. You're the okay. You're the founder uh, of the Southwest Patriots. And Rizal, how do you fit in? We just met up at a meeting prior to this, and he told me about um, that he was trying to get a group together and. Okay. when the meeting was and then so you you saw up. the opportunity seized on the moment yep. said i'm going to be part of this group i'm going to be active and i want to see some changes in the state yep excellent so jeff you formed southwest patriots tell us uh when how and why well formed is a little strong word but i started it uh with five other guys and my wife everybody who i've recruited to the meeting has heard the story before because it's what happened so it's what happened um my wife got tired of me yelling at my computer whenever what passed for news coming on, uh, and she said, you need to do something about it. So I said, I can't be the only one, and the numbers eight and five came in my head. If I contacted eight people who wanted to do something about it, and five said yes, when they came to the meeting, then great, we'll do something about it. If nobody shows up, I'll go home and scream at my computer some more. So we set a meeting. Out of the eight people who said they wanted to do something, five showed up. 
Southwest Patriots Coalition was born. So we sat down and said, in Dickinson, North Dakota, what can we possibly do um, to be effective anywhere? Well, so we came up with four major plank items. First, grow the group, because five people is no different than the one person mm -hmm. screaming at his computer. Uh, so the second thing is, once you grow the group, identify people who want to run for offices in different areas, local areas, school boards, county commissions, city commissions, park boards. Try and get appointed on the weed board if that's your interest. Because right now we have a dearth of candidates at these local positions. So that's the second plank that we, we mm -hmm. set. The third plank was communications. Everybody everybody understands that the communication dynamic in the, in the United States has completely changed in the last 40 years. And yet nobody acts like it has. We still require political bodies to publish their minutes in the paper of record. And yet papers are a dying industry. So you are requiring people to get their information from a source that's dying out. Therefore, people aren't getting that information. And yet, nobody's made any changes. And yes, there are some here and there small things where people televise a city commission meeting or a county commission meeting or something like that. It's not enough. It's not, con it's not consistent. Um, when we started looking at the minutes, there's lots of websites for areas in southwest North Dakota. Some of them last updated their minutes in 2013. <laughs> That's a great website addition. Right. You can, it's right at your fingers on the internet. <laughs> Seven years old, eight. Uh, so get real political information out to people in a form that they can access it. That was the third plank. And the fourth plank is education. You know, I used to be more politically active than I got out and got busy with a family and, and my business and stuff and came back in here. Um, but I have never been to a Dickinson Park Board meeting in my life. I don't know what they do. I don't know what their constraints are, anything. So before I try and hold these people accountable for their actions, it kind of behooves me to be educated about it a little bit. And so the fourth plank was have elected officials come in to tell the people what they think their job entails. Now, you don't have to believe them, <laughs> but you hear it straight from the elected official. So those were the four things that the five of us came up with. Um, Gary, Nick, Brian, Paul, uh, Ryan, and myself. And then we went out, set a date for an, a month out, and set about plank number one, growing the group. Well, um, now we're over 100 people who have attended meetings. Um, we've only had six. six you were at the last one. Um, we have had. Uh, a Dickinson Park Board uh, official speak, Joe Marie Cattermas. Uh, we've had um, uh, uh, Stark County Commissioner, Carl Arthard, come and speak for educational purposes. Uh, we had Brent Seeks, the president of the Dickinson School Board, speak. We had Mike LaFour from District 37 representative speak. We were supposed to have Karen Richards, the Stark County Auditor, speak the, the last meeting, previous meeting. Um, is, which is especially a hot topic because Stark County, like a lot of counties in North Dakota, are looking at trying to remove the elected position of county auditor and turn it into an appointed position. Right. And so hearing how she feels her position works is ex extremely important right now. But she had laryngitis, so Rich Wardner, Senator Rich Wardner from District 37, graciously, he was attending a meeting, graciously agreed when I dragooned him on the spot to, to stand up and speak and fill that role, and he did. Uh, and so then we had yourself at, yeah. at our last meeting. So Yeah, that was good. It was a good group of people um, that all seemed to be very interested in being active and learning more. Um, as far as the things that are most important to the group, um, Rizal, what are you seeing, what are you hearing from the members that seems to be providing the most value in their mind? Um, taxes, I would say. They're, uh, they're concerned about taxes? Yeah, taxes. Okay. Quite a few that uh, are, are high. And, you know, property, property sales, yeah. income, yeah. anything in particular, mainly Probably property? Probably to me, the, some of them have been the property taxes. A lot of people have talked about to me 
me. Okay. Um, um, and following you about how you're trying to get the property taxes. Um, so we don't have them. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a, a valiant effort if the uh, stars hadn't gone against us. Um, all right. And so are you getting any feedback um, or indication of a, a generation of interest in people looking to run for some of these positions? Because that is a, an absolute key thing. Are you hearing about that? Are you Well, we're trying feedback? to recruit. We are still trying to recruit people. We have two people so far. Well, first of all, we at the very earliest stages of our meetings when we were just getting together, um, we had three people step forward and District 37 already had its reorganizational meeting for the Republican Committee, um, but District 36 had not. Um, and so we had three people who stepped forward who wanted to participate in that process, and all three of them got elected to District 36. Okay. Um, those, those people were part of our group. Um, we don't claim responsibility for all of their campaign, but, but they were part of our group. Um, and uh, since then, um, with the elections further out and our recruiting, we have two individuals who have stepped up and said that they're going to be running for local positions. Uh, uh, one for Dickinson City Commission, uh, Dr. Barb Bear, um, and uh, um, the other one uh, is Dustin Anderson. He's going to be running for the Dickinson School Board. Um, and we're still trying to get other people interested in all these different positions. Yeah. I think that it, you know all four of your your uh, mission points are, are important, but if I had to pick only one, it would be to get people involved, to be elected or appointed to various local positions. That's the starting point. Everyone says, "What can we do?" That's the starting point. Exactly. Finding good people that will be serving of their community and sacrifice. I agree, but uh, but I disagree at the same time. To me, it's it's the political information that's the most key. Because even if you get a good person mm -hmm. into that position, if you don't know what they're doing, True. you can't communicate with them and tell them, yes, you're doing a good job, or no, I don't approve of what you just voted for. Yeah. And so for me, the, for me personally, the, the plank is getting real political information out yeah. to people. Agreed. They're all good. So, yeah. Listen, uh, we're going to carry over for another segment. Folks, uh, we will be right back. Uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit. 
plus Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you want to hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back. It's No Apologies, your after hours oasis of sanity. I'm your host, Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hintz. Where is she? Don't know. Um, all right. So we, we are with Jeff Pitsick and Rizal Unruh, uh, the founder and the, let's see, I'm going to, uh, let's see, it would be, I'm trying to think of the sidekick, not Robin, but uh, who's, it's the uh, Lone Ranger and Tonto. Tonto, <laughs> Tonto. Yes, yes. So we've got uh, Jeff and Tonto, yeah. and um, we are talking about Southwest Patriots and what it's doing, and it's four planks, which are all fantastic, getting people involved, getting people educated. Um, question I have for you is I think this is brilliant and it's going on in Dickinson number one do you know where else it may be going on in the state and number two how would you advise someone to get going beyond the obvious which is call five people or eight people you know and hope for five but is there anything beyond that so those two questions for you <laughs> well I've heard through the grapevine from people commenting that there's various kinds of, of, of citizens groups trying to become more active in the process. And so I don't, I'm not aware of anything in specific or any group by name or anything like that, um, but I'm aware there are other people making some sort of an attempt similar to what we're doing mm -hmm. um, in some way, shape, or form. And I'm, I'm almost positive it's happening across the country, not just in North Dakota. Um, I hope it is. I really do. Um, one, of the, one of the things I would suggest to people other than the obvious, and that's, that's an important obvious step, pick up the phone and talk to other people you know. Um, but beyond that, it takes a certain amount of persistence. Uh, and it also takes, and some of the group will probably disagree with me on this, but it takes getting away from some of the technological edge. You can only reach out to so many people on Facebook when a lot of conservatives don't want to be on Facebook anymore or other forms of the internet or whatever. Go to old fashioned, hanging up a flyer at the local diner attracts a lot of attention. Now maybe that doesn't work in downtown LA, but it certainly does in Southwest North Dakota. And we are Southwest, not just Dickinson. We have people coming from Belfield and Kildare area and all over that whole region, uh, Richardson Taylor. Um, there are people who travel 50, 60 miles to come to one of our me meetings one way. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's after working all day in the field or, or at construction or whatever else. So it, it can be done, but it takes a lot of just picking up the phone, talking to people, reaching out to people, and telling them honestly, do you want to try and make a difference? Are you? It, one of the things I put on all my posters, it didn't show up on yours because somebody else uh, made it look more professional. <laughs> but, but, but my big, big headline above our logo is, had enough. That's what I put on the top of it before it announces the meeting and the guest speaker and everything. Have you had enough? And that resonates with people because have they? Sure. You know, if they have, they'll be at a meeting once they know that there's something there. That's good marketing. That's like, um, you know, uh, what, what is it, gut milk? Yeah. Well, is that enough? Kind of, yeah. Um, all right. And so, <clears throat> now, Roselle, you're on Facebook. Yes. And you're not, I assume, He is Jeff? not, no. Okay. Not really. So, <laughs> so uh, you, how, can they, how can they reach you if, if they want to get some tips? Roselle, can well, they contact you on Facebook? Yes, they can, yes. Um, okay. But we do have a, uh, a Facebook page. 
Okay, Southwest Patriots yep. has a Facebook yes, page. They can a, message you on that? They can message on the... Can, and it's kind of a work in progress, progress right yeah, now. So, so I'm but not yes, quite sure we, if we can message yet, but yeah. yeah it it, it, is, it is just a page, not a group, so there's limited commentary and stuff. The goal on the, on the page is mostly just to put up information like the minutes and so forth. Um, in fact, uh, uh, for the first time ever, somebody was able to record uh, uh, Representative Becker speaking at our last one and the rest of the meeting, so you can see some of that. Uh, the previous ones weren't recorded. So um, we, have a, we have a lack of technological people <laughs> yes. in our group right now who haven't already volunteered for other things. Yes. And one of my rules, so Roselle is one of the first people to step up to help out with the organization. There's been many others, Mickey, and, and who does a lot of the secretarial work, and we've got we've got two people assigned just to gather minutes from the area. We've got two people assigned who are just reading through the minutes to parse it for the real information instead of, you know, the who said what kind of stuff. We've got all of that kind of stuff at the volunteer level going on right now, so. You know, there, there's a lot of different people coming together and working on this. Uh, and when you share out that much information, it gets a little uh, bifurcated at, at times. But nonetheless, it's coming together as a work in progress. And, and you can reach us through Facebook. You can reach us through phone numbers. You can reach us through email. Once you come to a meeting, we take your name and number. We put you on, on an email list if you have email. Otherwise, we actually physically phone call. Roselle does that. She yep. phone calls everybody who's not on Facebook and says, come to the meeting. Right. Um, so, but well, I just, uh, I, I, I just went to Southwest Patriots Coalition on Facebook. I went and clicked message, and I said hi. I got an answer back, hello. I said, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said it's Carrie. Um, oh, it's so, Carrie Rowe. So here you probably. go. It's that easy. Yep. It is that okay. easy. <laughs> so yep. easy access. Southwest Patriots Coalition. Uh, last words. We have just under a minute for before we say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Yeah. Um, it just he Jeff has made me step out of my box so much, and honestly, and Lori, um, I met her quite a few years ago, and. Just the passion of wanting to make a difference and um, leaving a better world for my kids. Exactly. Because um, I don't like where our world's going. Right. And we need people to start stepping up because if they don't, we're going to lose our country. And he's been such an uh, inspiration for me, like I said, to step out of my box. Um, and come on your show, yours and Laura's show, and um, it's just amazing. And he, and this is just, like I said, amazing. Yeah. And um, well, I think I think your message right there, we can go out on because that that's authentic. That's why you're in it. It's why everyone is looking and considering, or should at least, uh, becoming involved. It's important. Uh, if we don't, we lose our country. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much, both Thank of you. you. Appreciate it. All right, folks, we'll be right back. When you're buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the window source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water. The key ingredient to making our signature New York style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit. Plus, Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, 
I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. From Lambeau Field to your living room. Catch all the Green Bay Packers preseason games exclusively on Beck Sports. Available on KRDK, KNDB, or KNDN TV. The Pack take on the Houston Texans August 14th, followed by the New York Jets August 21st, and end off the preseason with the Buffalo Bills August 28th. Check Beck.Sports to find more scheduling and local channel information. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. And um, so good. It was so awesome. <laughs> they were excellent. You you picked the guests, and they were very very good guests. They were good well guests, done. and they are good guests. And it's, I think it's cute that you needed a Kleenex before you. <laughs> yes. All right. <clears throat> Next up, we've got a Freedom Fest interview. Uh, his name is Eric Carroll. Mm -hmm. uh, very passionate guy. He has a podcast oh. that is called Dad Talk Today. Excellent. Yeah, just a nice guy. And uh, let's go ahead and run the interview. All right, we are back at Freedom Fest in Rapid City, South Dakota, and I have with me Eric Carroll, and he is the host and personality for Dad Talk Today. Yeah. Welcome. Hey, Becker, thank you so much. Yeah, you bet, man. Um, glad to have you on. So you cover a topic that is, is, is emotional and that a lot of people are heavily invested in and concerned about. Tell our viewers what it is that, that you're looking at. So we talk about the breakdown in the nuclear family. I feel like that's really been a target, uh, especially inside of our politics. It feels like a planned agenda. If, if you can uh, break apart the family, you can tear away the very fabric of our nation. We don't have strong families, we won't have a strong nation. Yeah. The fatherless epidemic is on the rise. One out of every three children in the United States are without a dad. Uh, and I think the popular narrative is that these guys were just deadbeats that abandoned the home, that don't want to pay child support. No doubt there are some of those guys. Sure. Right? There's some of those moms that are the same way. But at the same token, uh, Family Court is a $60 billion a year industry, and it didn't get $60 billion from guys that weren't trying. Some of these guys are fighting tooth and nail to be inside of their children's lives, but they face obstacle after obstacle. So there's a lot of federal incentives that come back that, that you know, say to get the father out of the home and you can get this assistance, and many other things that uh, the mainstream probably aren't uh, talking about. And so that's why I created Dad Talk Today, was for those guys that felt like they weren't heard, that didn't have any resources, and uh, was playing a less than important role that society thinks they give, you know? Being right. a dad is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And uh, be, having that taken away or not being able to assume that role, uh, I, I couldn't imagine where my life Right. Would be. It's the fatherless epidemic, as you put it, is a tragedy. It's tragedy. Uh, well, it's a tragedy for the fathers. It's a tragedy for the children. It's actually a tragedy for society. Oh yeah. And we, the, I'm sure you've got all the data, but there are a number of statistics that show really what the ramifications are for a society in which fa a, a fatherless home is so prevalent. 26 out of 27 of the mass shooters came from fatherless homes. That is a very big common denominator. Yep. Uh, we talk about uh, teen pregnancies, uh, suicides, drop, uh, high school dropouts, juveniles, uh, drug addicts. All of that is on the rise when we're talking about fatherless homes. Uh, and our men right now, or, or boys over the age of 20, they're seven times more likely to commit suicide than that of women. 
And I believe a lot of what you're seeing, again, stems from those issues. In the African American households, uh, the, the statistics range, but we're from 72% to close to 80% of homes without a father. And people That's wonder crazy. why these kids want to go to gangs and get involved in other things. They're looking for a sense of family. Yeah. They're, they're looking for somewhere. And, you know, that's the void that not having that father uh, puts inside of your life. And if you don't have that, you're going to fill that void with something. Yeah. yeah you need, uh, uh, you need a, a male role model. Yeah. And you'll find it one way or another. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what are you looking at as far as um, solutions or, you know, the, where, where do you see this going? So we're trying to get something called shared parenting legislation which would say if, upon divorce or like a family breaks up uh, you would get equal custody you know two people came together they made a child two people should be able to come together and parent a child unfortunately especially in divorce and a breakup somewhere along the lines you take two people that once loved each other and they start button heads there's yeah. something that's tearing them apart now we take them in the middle of that conflict and throw them straight inside a family court where they're fussing over the money, the house, and then yep. the child always gets caught in the middle. Yep. It doesn't have to be that complicated. If we did what was in the best interest of the child, if you could come together and make a child, you can come together and parent a child. You know, there's going to be cases where that's not going to happen, and that's why there would still be full, discre full discretion to the judge. Mm -hmm. But that's just a starting point, we would say, equal. Yeah. And, you know, there's moms out there that face this, too. Oh, yeah. So for any of the moms that would be listening or that was going through those issues, you know, when fathers are fighting for equality, we're fighting for their equality, too. It's equality, not superiority. Uh, we has, is, is there a state, I'm sorry, is there a state in particular that would have ideal legislation right now? Kentucky Kentucky has some, which Arizona, uh, not Arizona, Arkansas passed it earlier this year, and I believe Arkansas had some of the best language for that bill. Unfortunately, you know, it'll be a little while down the line before we see the statistics that come out sure. for that. Yep. Kentucky passed it back in uh, 2018 for the first year. Domestic violence went down 30%. Now, wow. that's a very big number. That's huge. But, you know, the allegation of domestic violence is uh, is a very popular thing inside a family court to get that upper hand. So I don't know that domestic violence went down, but, but the allegation yes. of domestic wow. violence. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. That's... That is so interesting. Yeah, and we've been trying to get this legislation all across the country. Uh, I believe Arizona does have it already, but those are only three states. Yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of grassroots efforts trying to get this going, but it seems like we get blocked by the bar every single time. And there's a... Uh, self-interest, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of self-interest that want to protect this industry, but... You know, Becker, I, I can think of so many other ways I'd rather make money than the profit ah. off the destruction yep. of families. Yep, absolutely. Wow. I, I'll have to take a look at Kentucky and uh, um, Arkansas because I know there's a lot of people in North Dakota that contact me looking for answers of what we can do. and, and you know, so far I've not had them, but I'll, I'll look for some good examples. We'll definitely get it and send it to you. You know, all, yeah. all we're asking to do is put families back together. You know, we wish divorce didn't happen. We wish families didn't break up because really what's in the best interest of the children is for them to have mom and dad in the yes. household. Yep. You know, and uh, a lot of people celebrate right now saying uh, the marriage or the divorce rate is the lowest it's ever been. Hmm. And, for, and for the outside, that's just, that sounds really good, right? <laughs> well, the marriage rates are the lowest they've ever been. People aren't getting married anymore. Uh, they're just cohabitating, and the, those relationships that are breaking up are still at an all-time high. So we see kids and not wanting to get married. Kids. Right. And it's, it still ended up with yeah. single parent issues. And I believe that's because of the conflict that family court has made. People are afraid to get married. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Eric, thank you so much for being on. Great topic and uh, really good insight. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you, sir. All right. That looks like a podcast definitely worth checking out. Yeah. Yeah, nice guy. I, I think excellent. so. Um, so fun. That was a fun time. I, I wouldn't mind if we had those uh, at least twice a year. Right, There's those so freedom many, So many interesting people. Exactly. Uh, all right. So next up, folks, we have off the cuff. Lori is going to, Surprise. I don't know, test me, push me. Test, yeah. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. 
Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance Spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, shuffleboards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Made in Bismarck. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, we're back. And Laurie, I'm glad to see you're still here. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's nice of you to be present for three out of the five segments like, tonight. Wow, thanks. Yeah. Like I just bailed or something. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this and, and the premise of Off the Cup is that he does not know what the topic She's is. She's so excited to tell I, me the well, topic. This is so is weird so... because I did not know what your segment one topic was going to be okay. when I chose my Off the Cuffs. Okay. Okay. They're on the same topic. Oh. as cognia, essentially, and education. My my two topics oh. are on education, so it's like, this is so great. Excellent. So, all right, so my- So if we covered it, let's just do some karaoke. <laughs> no, no karaoke, nobody needs to see that. Okay. So the deal is, is I found an article way back in July, and I've been hanging on to this one on foxnews.com, and it was entitled, Washington Post breaks rank with Democrats on giving poor kids choices in education. Now this is anathema. This is like crazy talk that WAPO mm -hmm. would be getting that clue at That's all. That's interesting. That's That's the bottom yeah. of the, the byline the, underneath it says, liberal paper says House Democrats and the Biden administration are, quote, quietly killing a worthy program. Let's take a look at this full quote. The deal is, is that you and I were talking with Erica Smith not long ago, the, um, er, the attorney from Institute for Justice, and it reminded me of this education article and talking about school choice and the like. For 17 years, a federally funded K-12 scholarship program has given thousands of poor children in D.C. the opportunity to attend private schools and the chance to go on to college. And for many of those 17 years, the program has been in the crosshairs of unions and other opponents of private school vouchers, the Post Editorial Board wrote. This is WAPO, this is the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. Quote, their relentless efforts 
unfortunately may now finally succeed with House Democrats and the Biden administration quietly laying the groundwork to kill off this worthy program. Now, my question to you is this. Is it me, or does it seem like some in the liberal media, some Democrats, and generally left-leaning people across the country right now are accidentally stumbling into the truth <laughs> and stumbling into liberty and conservative beliefs? Because this isn't the only story that I've seen where somebody who you think is a very liberal media type mm -hmm. is actually gathering the truth. I've noticed with Afghanistan that left-leaning media right. is <clears throat> actually getting it. I, yeah, I, I think that when you have this this program, for instance, a school choice type program or a voucher type program is so good for students and it's so good for low income students. I don't even want to say minority because it doesn't matter what color you are, but if you're low income in a bad area with bad schools, this gives you an opportunity without having to be wealthy like all of the politicians' kids. Um, and so I think that it is so self-evident that this is a good program that there may be people higher up in the Washington Post and some of these other organizations that say, you know, we love towing the, the line for Democrats, but this, this is good and, and we need to try and maybe help affect some change. Because there's one, th it's hard when it's, so, when it's right in your face that you've got the kids' interests here and the education unions here and there's a policy that elevates the kids but the Democrats want to elevate the unions, you can still be generally helpful to the Democrats and say, no, the enough is enough. We are not going to sacrifice our kids for the unions. And so may, it, may, it might be policy specific. Mm -hmm. I was just was astounded at the source from this. Now, on the same topic, this is just so unbelievable that you talked education first, because on the same education topic, I found another article that I wanted to talk about in the Washington Free Beacon. And it was the lucrative business of woke education. You just talked about Cognia. This goes delves into how it's a money maker. This Washington Free Beacon article says this. Let's take a look at the first one. A top diversity consultancy has ties to every level of the private school accreditation process, a Washington Free Beacon analysis found, creating a lucrative diet of contracts and jobs for its employees. As their education has been shaped by the Glasgow Group's consultants, diversity professionals have procured more and more power and more and more money. Much of that money comes from the equity audits, as just as you were talking mm -hmm. about, that schools purchase to demonstrate their compliance with accreditation standards. The audits ask schools how they are promoting social justice in the classroom and encourage them to build out their diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI bureaucracy, no matter how large it may already be. Now, the growth of this DEI bureaucracy, exactly as you were talking about, which is critical race theory, essentially, has alienated parents who say their kids' schools have become obsessed with racial identity now. And that pushback has made headlines. The New York Times covered uproars at um, places like Brearley, Dalton, and Grace Episcopal in New York. But relatively little headway, and the nation's top private schools have all gone woke Simultaneously, these are the private schools. This is not the public schools. So families who seek an escape hatch actually can't find one, according mm -hmm. to this article, um, because all the best schools are beholden to the same accreditors and use the same consultants. So my question for you is, how do we solve this crisis in education? Do we ditch the whole Department of Ed? How do we untangle all the financial and woke tentacles in this piece by piece as parents? <clears throat> Wow, that's a that's a tough question. That's a tough question. You know, first I I, I want to point out how insidious this has been because way back when my kids were in um, elementary school, that's where I was hearing that words are violence, and that's where we are getting away from uh, Halloween parties to be fall festivals, right? And we are getting away from Christmas to be winter, you know, party or festival or whatever it might be. And I was all up in arms, and, and of course, the, the general tone is, you know, it's not that big of a deal, just take it easy, don't be such an extremist. Mm -hmm. And it is a slippery slope, and man, we are zooming now. We are zooming at the speed of light. 
Um, I think that I don't have a solid answer for you on what can we do when so many are beholden to the accredited agencies. However, we can educate ourselves because there's more than one type of, more than one accrediting agency. Okay. And we can look for a school that is accredited by an agency that seems to be least egregious in their social justice bullcrap. Um, furthermore, we can, um, those that are in a position to make donations can make donations to private schools with strings tied to it saying, you know, this or that or what have you. And so you may have a school that, that uh, then needs to look more closely at, gosh, what can we do to try and break away from this or at least mitigate the effects of this uh, and, and, and the effects that it's having on the children. I've got one last question for okay. you and a couple of minutes on it. And this is, um, today there, you may have heard the news story about what happened at the, at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. today. There was a gentleman who was in a black pickup truck and he um, presented with a detonator in his hand and, and, you know, said that he was going to blow up the Capitol. It was parked right near the um, <coughs> National Archives and also the RNC. And so all of these different places were evacuated today. Now, when that happened, I read an article about it on the Associated Press, and it said that for some reason they talked about the RNC and the DNC on, on, on January 6th, and the pipe bombs that were left, do you recall that story? There were pipe bombs left at both the DNC and the RNC that day of January 6th. Hmm. Nobody's talking about it, and here's my favorite part. Nobody knows who did it yet. We are in August, and nobody has been charged hmm. for leaving pipe bombs at both of those places. Why would that possibly be with all of the cameras that we do not know who Ashley Babbitt's shooter was, and we don't know who left two pipe bombs in Washington, D.C.? Well, we do know who the shooter was. Right, but nobody's naming him. Okay, now, here, I'm going to go out on a different approach. I, I, I think that's fine. I don't think he should be named. Okay. Because... Um, if a determined investigation was done, which I assume, and it was determined that he acted reasonably or in self-defense, we can all disagree on that. But the point is, if he was acting in self-defense um, and had the right, and then you put his name out, you're doxing him right. for something that is going to be severe. He and his family would be in danger, so I'm okay with that. All right, folks. Uh, hey, we've got a repeat tomorrow night. We've got to have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Adios. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.